Colin Kaepernick is back in the news after alleging that his white parents, get this, are racist. Well, actually, it's a pretty reasonable claim because as someone who also doesn't identify with white culture, I know what it's like to have it thrust upon you when my parents forced me to play hockey at the ripe age of six years old. Ryan, why are you wearing a do-rag? Made me get up against my will at 6 a.m. sharp, which we all know is white people time. But you're white. And on top of that, when I spoke abonics to my grandmother, my dad pulled me aside and said, stop calling grandma a biatch because apparently other cultures are not welcome at this hospice. You know what? Now that you mention it, I also had whiteness foisted upon me. Where'd you get a matching do-rag? That's not important. What's important is that for my bar mitzvah, I wanted to wear a do-rag instead of a kippah. This thing is street legal. They wouldn't allow it. And I also requested instead of a rabbi to get the Reverend Al Sharpton. But they said they couldn't afford him. And now that I think about it, I don't even think they asked. I don't know if you're trying to make some sort of mockery of my culture, but when my grandmother died, I wanted to eulogize her with a freestyle and everyone was violently opposed to that. Not to mention the pushback against what I wanted to wear to the funeral, which was very baggy gray sweatpants, a white wife beater, two baby blue wristbands, a matching baby blue headband, Allen Iverson style. And I was told that there's a dress code at this funeral, which sounds about white. Oh, Ryan, I know what dress code really means. When I was at Passover, they're all droning on about Jewish slaves. And I was like, can we talk about the real slaves, please? Okay, but you actually do identify with white culture and I don't, which is why it was problematic when my parents forced me to do my homework against my will when what I really wanted to do was walk around the house with a comically large ghetto blaster blasting music at all hours of the night. I was forced to light Hanukkah candles during Kwanzaa, Ryan. I was grounded for showing up baked to Easter, which is a part of my Rastafarian roots, which I was not allowed to explore. And I actually don't appreciate you making a mockery of this. Because of the programming of my white parents, I'm physically incapable of getting waves. We have Adam Rowe in the studio, folks. The boys, it's the boys cast. The lads, it's the boys cast. The dudes, we pack ourselves for boys cast. The bros, it's the boys cast. The homies, it's the boys cast. The dudes, it's the boys cast. The boys cast. The boys cast. Adam Rowe in the studio. Hello. From across the pond. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Contagious. It's really, really funny hearing you do what is a typical British Hugh Grant accent <laughs> yeah, yeah. me. Because that's just not. Yeah, yeah, well, Liverpool is like a way different. You guys, I mean, everywhere is like. I'm, well, sure, I'm sure. Can you tell all the. Like, can you tell if you talk to somebody what specific area? In the UK? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They're so different. But like North London, like South, like that specifically? Yeah. No, I could do like. I mean, yeah, probably. Probably. Liverpool's yeah. like the Beatles, right? Liverpool's the Beatles, right? Yeah, um, but like my accent is like th this is the third time I've been to New York. The first time I came over, everyone was like, "Oh, are you Scottish or are you Irish?" And then the last time I was here, I've told the story a couple of times. Uh, the f I can't even remember who it was, but it was at the Comedy Cellar, and someone heard me talking and said, "Hey, are you from Syria?" Syria. <laughs> His first <laughs> guess was that I was Syrian. Yeah, this is a comic? And I know I'm a dark-haired, hairy guy. Yeah, it was another comma. They were sat like near the, the, the table at the, the cellar. <laughs> Syrian. Hey, are you Syrian? I was like, no, Liverpool. They, they were, were like, oh, the Beatles. Yeah. It does seem like the accent that you have is almost sounds a little Scottish in the sense that it was, do you know like I count Dankula? Yeah. Like I legitimately, I'll, like he does like stuff, like his internet show. I'm like, I know he's a funny guy, but sometimes when I w watch his things and I'm like, I don't know what this guy's saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it I was, I can't remember where I was recently, but I was at some show at the stand actually. And I started talking to somebody in the front and they were on vacation from school. I think it was Scotland, which I guessed correctly. And then he, I asked him a question and his answer was like, I don't know what you just said. Like, honestly, nobody had any Your idea. Your crowd work didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it, was, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. I just didn't understand what he was saying <laughs> in English. I was like, what? It's, uh, it's very difficult to have everyone take the piss out of you speaking your first language, thinking you're from somewhere else. So. That's um, uh, <laughs> uh, basically most of American TV is like guys from London uh, talking about American politics and telling Americans why they're bad. <laughs> that's, that's like a big pathway. It's like you become popular in Britain and then you can find Finally, come over to America where you can tell Americans they're bad. <laughs> That's the dream for me. That's why I'm here. Yes. I'm, on, I'm on a pilgrimage. Um, yeah, the the accent is tough. It, I I naturally slow down a bit when I'm talking to you guys. Oh, like I'm normally a lot quicker. Um, when so I've I've released a couple of specials this year. The first one I put out, uh, Shane Gillis tweeted it for me. He's like, "Oh, my mate Adams put a special out," and I just clicked it and just looked at the comments. 
every single comment is what where the fuck <laughs> is this come from what is that fucking noise shane why have you shared this with that without subtitles <laughs> like there's no way we can understand this guy um yeah it's it, it's a very thick strong accent but liverpool is an immigrant city from ireland really so there's a lot of irish in liverpool so the, you've got the north of england and ireland which is sort of created this just a news. bunch of people that can't speak english very yeah, well. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> and it's even harder for like a brit like me to come over here than it would be for you to go to england because we see oh. every fucking tv show you guys make sure every like corner major guys. movie is 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 done from here like you don't see any this of this is shit. a bit of a stolen valor we aren't from we're, america we're, yeah, we're all canadian <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. Ryan, Ryan get, get yeah, this, is still, this is still. About. I, I couldn't let it go on any longer. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, was just, I just made a for the Canadians. No. I just made a reference, but I was going to say because Ryan gets a lot of shit for his accent. Yeah, and he showed as well. And like, I'm sitting here <laughs> pretending, and I'm like, yeah, "Can you believe having an accent?" <laughs> <laughs> like people are yelling at the fucking screen right now, being like, "You got some fucking nerve, Ryan!" <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were Canadian as well. It just fucking fell out of my head. Sure, but it, like it does sound very similar. Okay, dude. Certainly. Like, here's an example. Do you care about the like the Oscars? Does anyone care about the Oscars? Where you're from? C- care? No. But do you care? No, I don't care. <laughs> but I'm like a cool hip guy. I, I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a guy that presents. He myself wants is to. too cool for that. Someone he goes to Oscars, to. I go, yeah, I love that's it. Like I, the hot dog company? The morning after it, I woke up and checked who'd won. Yeah. But like The Hugh Grant thing was good. What's yeah. the Hugh Grant thing? What do you do? see? He was like, I don't know. He just really did not want to be there. And then uh, that plus size model was like interviewing him or whatever. Yeah. And so Hugh Grant's just was too like, cool She's like, school. what's your like favorite part? And he's like, about the Oscars? And he's like, I don't know. And then she's like, uh, who made your suit? He's like, Taylor. <laughs> he's honest it looks like someone's funny. gone uh, Hugh can you do an interview and he's gone absolutely not no I'm I'm busy no, not it's giving like he's a fuck forced to be there yeah 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 it's like the red carpet of the Oscars <laughs> and she's really trying like God bless it like yeah, every, sure. ev- everyone's given Hugh Grant a lot of credit like going this is really funny and like she Ashley Graham it is and she's trying her best she's like so yeah 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 who are you wearing and he goes it's my suit yeah, it's <laughs> just dummying some girl like, this was her big break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's just having a fucking nightmare, but he just couldn't give a fuck. Like, it's like he's missing his daughter's birthday yeah. <laughs> to have this interview. <laughs> it's the Steve Carell when he's doing the, when he's doing improv. Yeah. And he always just says, I haven't got a gun there. You just always put a stop to whatever they're trying to do. Oh, you're having a fun time? Not really. Okay. <laughs> you know, the only thing I do with those things is a little bit probably just, I, I'll skim through to see if there's any good controversies. That's what, like, I'll see who's mad. Like I saw a lot of people on Twitter that were talking about the the Brendan Fraser one, yeah. like saying that uh, the, probably the best tweet I saw was that like just know that this movie was made by like a guy that's not fat enough by a <laughs> team of people that were fat. Like they were mad that the directors and writers were yeah, fat yeah, too. Yeah, of course, of course. Like, but I just love the idea that if you're gonna make a movie about fat people, like the everyone's the caterers. I have mean, to be that's fat. the rules. <laughs> Those are the new rules. I don't know. Maybe fat That's people okay. were too lazy to write the fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's like, yeah, we had a lot of fat people on the writing squad. <laughs> the thing is, though, like, I understand the arguments for, like, uh, diversity and, like, oh, there's not enough fat lead roles for this. Should go. I understand the arguments. I'm not saying I agree with it. But he's just won the Oscar for Best Actor. Like, right. he's won it. And afterwards, people are going, but should he really have played it? Mm-hmm. How can he win that award? And then be like, was this the best guy? <laughs> That's a good point. He was literally the best actor this year. Sure. And you don't know whether he was good enough to play the role he won it for. And also with Brendan Fraser, it's funny, too, because they're sort of like, oh, like... Uh, they should have picked someone else and Brendan Fraser's like hey they're not throwing roles at me yeah yeah like, he's like, this, this I don't know if you've checked out my career trajectory <laughs> yeah. yeah they're like what are you doing playing a fat guy he was like yeah would have loved to play leading cool guy <laughs> <laughs> wasn't really on the table yeah, in the last those mummy years. roles kind of dried up <laughs> yeah that's the other thing there was so there was that one and then people were saying that like there wasn't enough uh, gay people doing the gay roles or whatever yep. which was whatever but more importantly do you know Diplo who 
Diplo, the DJ? famous DJ. Oh yeah, yeah. But basically, he was doing like podcast circuit, and he was coming out, and he said that like he's been having sex with uh, men and letting guys blow them, but he doesn't uh, look them in the eyes, so he doesn't consider it gay. So that is sort of the question: Is that gay if you don't look him in the eyes? Absolutely he was saying that not, not jokingly. <laughs> no, he's sort of. Yeah, he was doing the like Emily Rajatowski or whatever. So it's but he basically Diplo is saying he's like, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes I get head from guys, but I don't look him in the eyes, so nothing gay about it. It is okay. just borrowing a bit of moisture from a stranger, though, isn't it? Like, so that's how you see it. You say not gay. <laughs> yeah, I You're think one it, for not gay. I th- I, I'd go for not gay, but if if he was the one sucking the dick, then it's it's all of a sudden gay. You're if like, you, yeah, I didn't look at him. You're if like, you oh, have there's a dick in your if mouth. you have a dick in any of your holes at any point, <laughs> it's gay. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, but it is. Have you ever heard <laughs> the thing where uh, they said that definitely that um, like dudes, when you get like famous or rich enough, you basically become a chick, where people are. You know what I mean? Like, because girls, it's like everyone's trying to buy them stuff and try yeah. to like get them or whatever. It's like guys, if you get famous enough or rich enough, it's like you get treated how a hot yeah, girl you get gets treated. Like a hot girl, yeah. But that's maybe he has that too, where he's like the same with girls. It's like girls can sort of make out with a girl at a party, and it's not a big deal. When you're a rich, famous celebrity, it's like you basically become a girl again. Where it's like, yeah, I got blown by a guy, nothing gay about it. I'm like a rich. You essentially go back to the, the old Tom Cruise defense. <laughs> yeah, it's the old Tom Cruise defense. Um, Would you rather never get blown again or only get blown by guys for the rest of your life? Never get blown again. I barely get blown as is. (laughs) One's a pretty rare occurrence. (laughs) I'm being completely honest. Okay, fair enough. I have, like, that's what Natish, I guess I'm airing it out, but Natish would always say that. He'd be like, yeah, like maybe once a week my girl just blows me and we don't have sex or whatever. And you're just like, how do you finagle that? Yeah, what's what's the the negotiation process there? You're getting blown a lot, Danny. (laughs) That's normal there, though. That's neither here no. nor there. You think once a week just a straight up nothing else? I mean, I, I wouldn't put like an absolute definite calendar timing on it, but pr- yeah, yeah. Once I don't know. That's. I mean, it depends. I'm on once the, a decade. First off, here's the thing: <laughs> depends on the girl, and then but there is, and everybody who's watching this, guys, know exactly what I'm talking about. The more you get blown, the more problems you have. That is a crazy. <laughs> it's really always the psychos who want to blow you all the time. <laughs> It's always the ones where you're like the ones who are really. I guess that I, is this, true. It is. It's the like if you're not getting blown a lot, you're having a fairly peaceful home life. Okay, I, I so I do have. Do you a know what I've peaceful. genuinely got to tell you from my relationship experience? It was the exact opposite. Opposite, really? The exact opposite, See, though. Interesting. My, like, without going into details. Yeah, cool, uh, cool girl, super nice, a lot of blowing. Yeah, just like yeah, we're in a relationship. I, this makes you happy. I no, want to make you no, happy. No, not mental. Yeah. Sees those Patreon numbers. She would blow up. me, and I would uh, cook more. <laughs> no, you cook. I cook. Well, that's my thing is I don't do any girl shit. He's a but. bean man. <laughs> I'm not out here in a neighborhood. He's, he's big on your food culture, actually. <laughs> big <laughs> canned bean man. I do like a canned bean, yeah. Yeah, ba- like baked beans and stuff. It's like beans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it's like a, sim- <laughs> that's like a simple like meal. I'm not into it. <laughs> no, but there is always. I, I feel a lot of people always go viral on the internet, being like, everyone's like, oh, you have to go to get, see the food in Paris, and it'll be just a person with like a piece of toast and some beans on the thing, and they're like, this is what I had to come for. <laughs> this is like what everyone's been talking about. I like coming here for food because America just does uh, food. It's bigger. And it's you, you, the, the, it's just that ridiculous bigger times. portions for sure. They're not messing around with portions. I had steak, fries, and eggs at nine thirty a.m. because <laughs> that was the breakfast special this morning. <laughs> sure. And I sent it to my girlfriend. She was like, "It's half nine in the morning." I was like, "When in Rome?" Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I'm with a fat American, I'm skinny here, babe. <laughs> I am though. Like not in New York, because New York you, you, people New walk everywhere. Yeah. But like, yeah, I do feel. Oh, dude, like, go to like Nashville. I'm going. You'll Nashville. be like emaciated <laughs> in comparison to the big, big, uh, big ones for sure. <laughs> big, big boys down there. Um, okay, so you're a sports guy, and we're sort of like talking on our Patreon a little bit about this Tiger Woods thing, but it's sort of like blown up. Are you a Tiger Woods fan? <laughs> uh, I am. Um, I, in this new era of Tiger Woods, I wasn't really bothered until I found out about uh, his true numbers, and yeah, that's yeah. when I fell in love with the guy. <laughs> Are you a golf fan now? <laughs> golf, no. Uh, I used to play quite a lot when I was a, a teenager, and I haven't played for about 10 years, but I've promised myself I'm getting back into it this year. Yeah, okay. Um, but I've got a shoulder that likes to dislocate itself. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Mm. His is sort of like... Tiger Woods does keep presenting himself as like sort of a dog. Like even... With that, what was the other one? He was on the... On the course, and then he, oh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he handed Justin Thomas a tampon when he got drunk. It's just funny, though, isn't it? That, that is so funny. funny. The fact that he, like, in the morning was like, goes to his caddy or himself, and he's like, I'm gonna throw a couple tampons in my bag because <laughs> I'm gonna need them. Like, he had to plan that. Like, his whole plan 
was he had the idea where he's like gonna throw a couple tampons in the bag for when I out, <laughs> out drive JT and then I can, uh, <laughs> is it not a more interesting world if he didn't plan it and he's just like where the fuck is this come from <laughs> oh actually <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pussy on the run though and I love that he's so insulated he doesn't realize that like he's gonna get in trouble for that like he really had no clue he goes what yeah he's, it is funny it? but it's Why? also obvious you're gonna get there's gonna be headlines about it and he's just is, and to be him who's already had headlines that you do not want and no. to still be like ah fuck yeah. it you're right because he just non-stop makes moves that cost him like millions of dollars every move you know what I mean but at the same time where you're just like he's someone's right. like hey this tampon thing is gonna get you in trouble he goes promise you it's not gonna pale in comparison to the other time <laughs> yeah, stuff yeah, I've been doing I mean he doesn't care at this point he has maybe I, I just hope that he just doesn't get a new girlfriend for the last three years of his like real career because he may he oh. tops has two three years left before he's really like and you think the girls down. are messing him up yes that's so he missed the players last week no no no. i think like girls with his superpower because if you think about it like he was i fucking, sort of think that a he, little he too. was fucking these women for years and like thousands of them like all the time cheating on his wife like f- going through number after number of, of of women and winning every championship at the same time yeah. and the second it came out he just became shit at golf that is true, he's yeah. the ultimate confidence player like yes. <laughs> he's lost his confidence and I do know what you mean he can't hit a ball as straight anymore <laughs> because he's not getting blown enough he literally was his, his secret power was his supermodels and they took away his supermodels and he was like they're like hey why don't you golf today and he was like I guess whatever like, <laughs> they sure. weren't supermodels though they were waffle waitresses and shit <laughs> that was the thing <laughs> they weren't supermodels that's because you don't get the guys like that that just like I'm, pussy I crazy. have no problem with it <laughs> yes I do I'm pussy crazy <laughs> I'm, I'm not at all you say they were waffle waitresses, but they weren't like the waffle waitresses we'd get to sleep with. Do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> like, Honestly, you elite. say that, but I actually think they are. I like, think that those, was like, it was kind of the thing that everybody was so flabbergasted about. I think that is true. The like guys like that, that when you're just like completely addicted to banging, like the Gene Simmons gene, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why they call him Gene. That's where it came from. Yeah. But the Gene Simmons gene, like legitimately, you're not discriminating. You're just like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's yeah. one. So I think that is waffle waitresses. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not. He's like, got well, too many injuries. Like he just he can't deal with it right now. He's just got to get focused on golf. No chicks for two years. So okay. So that's what you. But I, I'm sort of think, more with Adam because I, think I he do needs think more that. Chicks. Yeah, yeah because chicks. no. Okay, we all know. And the girlfriend was the problem. We all know the uh, the person that was like a comedian that gets the girlfriend, and all of a sudden they're like watching too much Netflix. They're not writing. They're you know. Your mm-hmm. career is getting screwed up. Yep. I don't. Re- uh, but we also know the guy that's been banging too many, too many. I think the sweet spot for Tiger Woods was have a wife and <laughs> then also bang the supermodels. Because yeah, yeah. if he doesn't have the wife, he's he probably needs both of them. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, he's forty. And he needs the wife to tone down how many supermodels he's banging. He, he needs a, a healthy home life with a, a blissfully ignorant wife yeah. and supermodels. And if you take either away, it's like giving them left-handed clubs. <laughs> It is. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. And um, it also, there is something about like he, 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 because you could with Tiger Woods. There's like, why can't you just have a girl who is like, listen, you know the deal. I'm going to be out there a bit, but you're going to have a great life. He, he doesn't seem to be able to finagle that deal. No. Well, that, that's we know so- fucking, you know, like finance guys that have finagled that deal. How is Tiger Woods not <laughs> being able he's got to these do? bulletproof NDAs. It, I don't know. I know. Well, that might it be. seems to be the agreement Conor McGregor has with his wife. I don't know if you noticed that, but every like three what or four months, have? well, every three or four months, there's rumors that like someone else is pregnant via Conor McGregor or... Yeah, like, I remember it, I mean, every now and then a rumor, but not Yeah, pregnant. and he's like, he's always fucking me. There's pictures of him like in hotel rooms with girls with his hand like half up their dress. <laughs> and ooh, then ooh. at every UFC event, D Devlin, his wife is just like hanging off him and it's so obvious he's gone look i'm a two weight world champion and i'm a billionaire now you can either be with me and i'm gonna fuck everyone or you can go and have john who works in the (laughs) chest (laughs) yeah yeah i know for sure they're they're your options and she's gone fuck who you want i guess the the counterpoint to that is he was like listen you can be with me and be a billionaire he's like she's like yeah what the part you're not realizing or is i could not be with you and be half your money billionaire. (laughs) he's like oh how much money do you have he's like how about having half of that how does that sound because i was like she at that point i'm sure connor is like early in he probably doesn't even have prenups or anything like that no no that's his that's maybe check yeah She's going to own half of his... uh, But I think there is something to be said about, like, when you are that, like, that in sports especially, it's like, I do whatever I want. I think it's that, you know, there's something about, like, in the intellectual pursuits, I think, that doesn't help you as much. Although there's, like, the Einsteins of the world that were just, like, nonstop banging. Was he? 
I apparently some of those guys, I think this might might have been Einstein, but he was like notoriously like a bad guy. Like I don't know, know if he was a big like uh like sleeping with his friends' wives and stuff. Like he, he just uh, yeah, I, I don't know, but I know he had like a funny contract with his wife. All, all their girlfriends are like fourteen too. Like yeah, yeah. don't don't <laughs> yeah, look yeah. into the ages of these chicks. <laughs> No, a lot you of heard the- it here first. Einstein piece of <laughs> shit. Cancelled. <laughs> Fuck you, Einstein. I think when it comes to Einstein, you just have to separate the art from the artist. <laughs> 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 We've got to be able to have gravity. Like, we just need it. <laughs> <laughs> and you also are gonna have a lot of gravity with the girls Tiger's been banging sixes and fives. <laughs> the well, what so? But what happened was the interesting thing about him is like it kind of reminds me of like very. I, I, I don't know if he's like friends with Donald Trump, but it's very like reminds me of Donald Trump behavior where he was just like, you know, what you hear about like Trump kind of will like just not pay contractors or whatever, like things where it's just like you could tell this guy's just like, I'm going to do what I want. And like, I'm not, I don't care about people's feelings sort of thing. Yeah. Tiger Woods is like how he I don't know if you saw what happened, but basically he was with his like girl and then how he broke up with her is he convinced her that they're going on a vacation and then she packed her bags and then got out and got in the thing and then he just locked all the doors and he's like, yeah, yeah, we're broken up now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, she was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you have your bags now. So good. <laughs> You're like that's crazy. I mean, well, you know it, what though, a chick is super crazy. He's probably like, this is for me, kind of just like the. So easiest, that's your your easiest way it. for him to get out of this. I feel like for, in his mind, he's just like, I don't know. He's weird. He's a weird dude. Like I remember, there's a famous story. I think I said it before, where he was super famous and he was with Derek Jeter and Michael Jordan at some club, and then he's like, I don't know how to. He's like, what do I say to these girls? Like I don't know, and they're like, what? tell them you're Tiger Woods. I think you told me I that told you story. That, yeah, yeah you like, love that story. It's hilarious. But he's like a dweeb. <laughs> he's like a golf nerd. He's not like some cool dude. He yeah, just happens to be he, good at golf. Then he took that advice and took it to, <laughs> yeah, he took it to the <laughs> end of the <laughs> He's like walking around the mall being like, hey, I'm Tiger Woods. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm Tiger Woods. <laughs> um, Tiger Woods here. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tiger Woods. <laughs> um, on the vacation thing, where did he tell this woman she was going? That That's she a good packed question. All of it. <laughs> 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 Big vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to Australia for a year, yeah. and we're also we're going somewhere that's hot. Then we're going to somewhere that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna want the coat. Yeah, we're gonna be hiking. You're gonna want everything. The nightmare too is she's just like, yeah, I, I should still be allowed to live at the house. Like that's her thing. She goes. Like, that's what she said. She goes. We had a le- uh, an agreement where I could still live there. Regardless of our like relationship status. Wait, so, so before, she's trying to, how did they make that agreement? She says it's an oral oral agreement. So he's like, yeah, no, that didn't happen. Nice try. Oral agreement. She, well, it's her whole thing. She goes, we had an oral agreement that I got to live at the house, even if like it didn't work out. He's not honoring it. So uh, like f- based on the value of the rent of that house, what that <laughs> rent, she goes, I want $30 million because so, that would make me whole essentially. <laughs> make me whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, basically. But when you're someone so, like Tiger Woods, this is what you probably have to deal with whenever a relationship blows up. Okay, but is the gist of it that she sort of said uh, she got broken up with Tiger Woods? She's not taking it well. No, like, but, Tiger- <laughs> 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 but like his, she basically was like t- telling him like, and if we break up, I can still live here. And he was like, Yeah, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. That is a man who was trying to watch the golf. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and just wanted someone to shut up. <laughs> hey, if we break up, can I still live here? Sure. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the garage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah the fucking yeah. game is on. Like when you shut <laughs> up. That does sound a little bit like that. Yeah. You're right, though. But like that, there is that where it is probably somewhat difficult to date at that level. For sure. I mean, she had to sign her whole thing, and she's trying to like break her NDA right now. She's in court because he made her sign like a pretty like bulletproof NDA that says you can't talk about any of this stuff in our relationship. Can't post pictures. Nothing. Such a and she's trying to right now say like hey what am I allowed to like talk about and they're like nothing. Have you ever considered giving a girl your girl an NDA? Uh, n- no, uh, I'd imagine it might happen the other way around. <laughs> she give you one. She'd be like you can't talk about this on stage. Uh, so whenever I start dating someone, I always do say like I I will talk about my life, including a relationship. Like if you if that's ever going to make you uncomfortable, we can't see each other. I have said that to pretty much every girl I've ended up in a relationship. Did any of them say no? No, but they, you can tell sometimes they're a bit like, Everything. Can, we have, can we have a line? Yeah. Like, I've, I've got a girlfriend now, and she's all, all she said is I can't go into details about our sex life. Yeah. Especially on, like, our podcast, because, like, her family and friends have started listening to it, because uh. it's like, they've got, oh, she's dating this comic, and he does this thing, uh-huh. I'm going to start listening to it. She's like, so you can't be, like, going into details of what we've done, because... 
Do you, me, do you do that anyway? Head. I feel like that's more of like a girl podcast thing to be like the very specific gruesome details of your sex life is more of a girl podcast thing. Yeah, yeah. we don't go gruesome on ours, but in the past I have sort of... What What I will do is I will mention things about people from the past without names. It's And less about like your girlfriend, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's pro- yeah, if you're like, oh, this story about this like chick, but not like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going, hey, you know the girl you've all met yeah. and shook hands with? <laughs> it's almost Kids like on the cheek. <laughs> totally, it's almost weird when a guy's too like telling you about his sex life with his yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. You're like, okay, what? Yeah. she's like, yeah, I was banging this girl, like just a hoe or your wife? <laughs> My wife. Yeah, I'm good on this story. Thanks. <laughs> I've got to look her in the eye tomorrow. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I'm keep it. <laughs> well. So basically when that happened, they were kind of going back in all his dating history and everything's like just coming out. So like all of the stuff that he did do was like, basically they said it was like over a hundred women that he banged back in the day and all that stuff's been like super talked about. But I don't think that number's that high for Tiger Woods. Doesn't seem that high. That is, there's, it's way higher than that. (laughs) A hundred. You're right. That's the one. I know open micers are at a hundred. He admitted that. Yeah. (laughs) That's well, that's the and then the two seats. of the ex, so one of the exes, and then this new one are talking on Twitter saying they're going to start a podcast, but like they're saying we have NDAs, but if they get lifted, we'll do a podcast. Really? Yeah, basically the Hugh Hefner thing where they the ex girls start a podcast about you, <laughs> dude. <laughs> can you think of anything worse than your two exes having a podcast about you? <laughs> <laughs> Is it- Dude, I remember when I was like, oh no, I remember like in when I was in Toronto, an ex of mine. And then a girl that I dated like way before her and I was like, I was talking to one of them still, but the other one was like pretty in the past and they were at a bar and they posted a story with the two of them together and someone sent it to me and I remember just my heart, (laughs) just like everything went like, I was like, how do I stop this? It's like this needs to end. What are you? What is going on right now? I'm trying to call the call, call in like a fire threat at the bar. <laughs> Do you talk about like exes on stage or anything like that without yeah. without details? You know what? A lot of times it's more like see. I I don't. Um, I, I, more so, I have a point that like if I'm talking about something that my ex did it's often something that like all girls do so okay. it's like if it's like some specific you know that thing that sometimes comedians will do where I'll be like this crazy guy did this crazy thing like isn't that crazy and you're like I guess I don't know you know what I mean yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's more so if my ex did something that was like you know something like for example I had a joke about my ex being like well you don't know what it's like to be like a man and walk home un- and feel unsafe or whatever yeah. and I was talking about like you think I've not felt unsafe walking through an alley like I'm always unsafe <laughs> but of course the guy's felt whatever right but it's like that wasn't like her saying that that was her saying a thing that other girls also say yeah yeah, yeah. so I'm probably more likely to do that yeah I uh, I suppose I, I I I I'm quite the opposite. Yeah, you have some <laughs> definitely some stuff. Well, I I told you before, like the the special I put out last month. Yeah, yeah. Called, Which, by the way, check it out. Very cool. Thank you very much. It's yeah, one yeah. story. It's called Juicy, and for legal reasons, I've got to say it was inspired by real life events and is a work of fiction. Yeah, <laughs> like the <laughs> law and order. <laughs> tell, do you want to tell the short version of it? So this is my third time in New York. The last time I was here was uh, January of 2022, and on the first night of that trip, I found out my girlfriend was stealing from me. Like she was using me bank card behind me back and buying herself things. That that's called stealing in England. Yeah. Oh, that's just, how that's how called having a girlfriend. Here. <laughs> Weird. Potato, <laughs> potato. <laughs> oh, I've definitely had those times where I'm like, oh, that's weird that I just ordered Uber Eats when I'm in Arkansas. <laughs> no, but like it was on top of the the agreed things. Like she was I mean? like embezzling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How, this is like embezzling. How so. long had you been uh, had some cash at this point? Uh, like fresh, or was it kind of a little more into it? I, I had a little bit when we started seeing each other, and then uh, I I was doing. All right. Okay. Once this started happening, yeah, yeah, it was. And how did you find out when you? And how did you find out when you were? Uh, I checked me a uh, banking app, and there was a, a pending payment that I didn't recognize, and I was like, "That's weird. I don't shop there." And she panicked, and she goes, "That's that's weird. That's weird. That that." I, and made a load you of called me. her and like caught her off guard with no, it. she was with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah she yeah, right, sat right, right, right in front of yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "That's weird." And she she panicked, and I. Because of how she reacted, I went, oh. And then we had a big argument. And I won't ruin it in case people are going to watch of it. Of course, but yeah. The, the, the extent of it, which became apparent over a period of time, uh, 
it's it was absolutely insane. So how much was the total value? You think? I can't tell you. It's too high. No, it, no, <laughs> you don't know. So I, I, I've signed a legal document that certain details won't be disclosed. Ooh. You're gonna make your money back one way. Or another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the special is called Juicy. It's on YouTube on a our podcast. Now, that is super funny what you said too, because you were here doing like podcasts and she was with you, and you're just like trying to be funny and stuff, <laughs> and you have this, you're like this little snake sitting in the room. Like, like I'm doing a podcast with the, the two co-hosts that we. And, and she's there, <laughs> like in periphery. Oh, it was fucking. Why did you just send her back? Um, <laughs> more money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it's just a flight change at that point. You're like, yes, I will pay the hundred dollar okay. change. For I me. I wanted to try and sort of uh, enjoy New York and, oh. and and enjoy the things we like. I had two tickets to a Knicks game, two tickets to a Broadway show. Right. So I, I just was like, you know what? Let's try and. I was also here for me thirtieth birthday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a fucking plane crash of a trip <laughs> um and i'm just glad that the special has been as well received as it has because people seem to really love it and it, it's just one of those things yeah. i like that you kept in uh saying that like we're not going to use this show and then use it <laughs> that's, <cool. laughs> that's no that's not the one we used so that was a clip yeah that was a clip that went out, but that's not the 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 show we used oh never mind okay yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, we bad. filmed it four times we did two nights in Glasgow in Scotland, and we did uh, two Saturday, two Sunday. That was from the extra footage. That's from the extra footage. It was just like, we might as well put it out. That was Because cool. it's not going to be in the, <laughs> in the show, yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! I I do sort of agree with Danny though that there's like a level of like especially if you got cast there's like a it's like you know the I guess it's when they say that uh, like if you run a restaurant like there's a bit of leakage <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure like, there's an expected amount of leakage <laughs> yeah that's just like part of the deal it's like your poison there's gonna be some theft I just I I I, I just don't mind someone using stuff as long as they go hey I'm using this. how did she get your card like she, it, like did be, she... because I was so liberal with like. Oh, we're going to Scotland for the weekend, and you want to book the spa. Here's my thing. Here's the thing. Right. Book it, and then it's saved on uh, uh, your iPhone. Yeah, but it's such a a crazy kind of scam because you can't really get away with it very good. She, she was banking on the fact that I don't don't che check. I don't check if I and would never. not check for a month. Yeah, yeah. and would never check. ever check. You don't do taxes. Like what is? There's an argument. It's self sabotage, and it's just yeah, yeah. Want, or she, wanted to be caught. Yeah, or just like thinks <laughs> did, she will just let it go. Did she give yeah. you the like? What took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Thank fuck for this. Yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> waiting for this day. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, that stinks. We got to take a quick second here to tell you about Fume. Now listen, we've all heard this. Don't start. Kick the habit. Put it out before it puts you out. All phrases we've heard a thousand times before. Yet, here we are, continuing to have bad habits. Just a bunch of bunch of bad habit idiots. Bad habit people. And Fume is putting a stop to that. In my case, I started vaping in my 30s like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that is now Whoops. a thing of the past. Yes. People know this about me. Thanks to Fume. It was a short-lived, and I actually am a big Fume guy. You are a big Fume guy. And I just got sent- You talk the talk. I just sent a whole bunch of cores. So if you don't know, Fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habits for a positive ones. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals, like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Now, so what happens is you have inhaler and you put these cores in. I got a whole bunch. You have maple pepper, crisp mint, Ooh. white cranberry. Take a, you ever taken the whiff of these? Yeah, give me, give me the white cranberry. Let me sm smash that Take white a, cranberry. Smash that. Let me smash this. Yeah, yeah. So I've been on this. Fume's new version 2 model is snappy and tactile with an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. That's the other thing. It's fun to play with. It looks cool. It feels great. Tastes great. You can do it on planes, too, mm -hmm. because there's no smoke. It's not that kind of a product. 
it's actually not bad for you. So the easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed to do perfectly just that. Fume's goal is to make switching easy and even enjoyable. They got thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've switched when other solutions just didn't work for them. So head to tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M.com. Use the code BOYSCAST to save 10% when you get your journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfume.com and use the code boyscast to save an additional 10% off your order today, fellas. Oh, uh, girls, I'll tell you what happened. Actually, I don't know. One, actually, I just wanted to bring up one funny thing that I saw. Like, so you know Jordan Peterson, right? Yeah. So we have. I, I love him maybe one having of Twitter. Top, top, one of the funniest things of all time. So I, he has Twitter, right? And there's this video <laughs> so. that I saw, and people were like, "This is what's happening in China." And it was a bunch of guys that were like strapped to beds, and they had like machines that were milking their dicks, and it was like to harvest sperm. And basically, and they were like, "This is what's happening in China." But it was obviously like I was. Like it's a from BDSM a porn, porn, porn. Yeah. Yeah. and then Jordan Peterson tweeted at me and like, "This is what's happening in China." He's like, "What is this?" He's like, "What is this? A three-child policy now, or something?" That's what he's. I was talking about this with Colum earlier. I, like, I, I, Jordan Peterson is is such a funny example of what can happen when you just go mad in the public eye. Because when he first came like out as like the guy, like his first thing was a, a British interview on Channel Four with yeah, Kathy yeah. Newman. And Kathy Newman, and yeah. she's just oh, the, 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 way you, the way you're saying. Yeah, so I think what you're saying is, and he's going, no, no, no. And he, he's so right down the line, c- really clear, and knows exactly what he's talking about on really complex issues and makes it look like a fucking arsehole. Totally. And now he's like, what do you mean you? What do you mean me? What do you mean door? <laughs> it's like, we all know what those words mean, Jordan. <laughs> a part of me feels like there's a, that like, there's that, but like a part of me feels like old people can't just use Twitter. Like some yeah. of it's too. Remember he left you because honestly, if you listen to him on like a long interview, it's not that. Cr- it's like it's just yo. It's like anyone over fifty can't use Twitter. No. <laughs> and he, Elon screwed him too because he was kicked <laughs> off of Twitter. And then yeah. Elon came back and bought it. Go, All right, you're back on. <laughs> when he said that he was never coming back. There was another one that everyone's tweeting. You know, uh, there was. Uh, uh, that I think it's a person like that uh, streamer named Shu or whatever, and basically she she like uh, there was a photo of her and then a photo of like her again, and it was like this is person's transition. It was a detransitioning thing, but it was like not at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that was my favorite thing I seen recently was because uh, I always said the trans stuff probably the worst thing, the worst person that the of all the people that talk about trans stuff the worst person that it's for is women who are look manly you know what i mean <laughs> and recently people have been posting all these photos and videos of like women ufc's that are just kind of manly and being like this is what happens when you let men in the ufc yeah, yeah, well there was because no you know what it was there was um, yeah, they have to keep coming up being like i'm actually a woman there was a mixed there was a mixed weight or a, like a no weight class female UFC fight. It wasn't like in the actual UFC, but it was like a mixed martial arts. And so this huge woman is just beating the shit out of this little woman. And the people are like, you like this? See what this is? A, a trans woman is fighting. A, 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 is this what we like? And then everybody was like, yeah, that's an actual woman. That's a, that is a biological woman. They just chose to fight in no weight class. It, it started with the the sprinter, didn't it? Casta Semania. Do you remember her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Casta Semania. But she was actually a woman. That like, is actually a woman, but then everyone just took a look at her and was like, <laughs> no, you're no. Not. Well, she was, her thing was she was, I guess, intersex. So she looked like a woman, but because she was intersex, her testosterone was above yeah. the allowable limits. Okay. for being a female. So her thing was pretty fucked up, actually, because she was so dominant. And then they're like, you have to take hormones to bring your testosterone down. But she's like, I'm just a woman yeah, this is how with I'm high testosterone. And they said, that's not fair. But the greatest thing about that was that her, an- her name is an anagram of, yes, a secret man. <laughs> Figured that out. <laughs> Who That's the hell so figured that out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Hold on. It really, that. it really is. Yes. Yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, secret. Man. So, what was her name? Casta Samania. Casta. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you want to do this right now, right? <laughs> man, yeah. Uh, secret man. Okay, I can't. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I can't figure it, it out. It is true. I promise you. I'm, I'm loving that though. It's so funny. <laughs> 
Um, mm, okay, so bad. there was like, there was basically like a t- a crazy amount of stories this week about like I don't know if this does this happen a lot in um, Britain that there's basically like a lot of like female teachers that get busted like having sex with their 13 year old male students and stuff like that uh, I wish there'd be more <laughs> uh, totally yeah no I, I, I think that we we often just get your news about that <laughs> yeah it, it, I, occasionally well, I don't know what is, it is one of them is from the, the prison though no the, that was Australia no that was the oh Okay, yeah, there's the honestly this week I've never seen so many, but the first one that I like cuz it was sort of a sports related episode. <laughs> 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 just the coach making the girls pull their tits up. Very sports related. <laughs> but there was um so okay, so this was at Harvard and basically the women's ice hockey teacher with hazing allegations. So did you play sports growing up? Yeah, football. Did you ever have to do like hazing stuff? Or is that like American frat shit? What do you mean hazing? Okay, so hazing is like initiation. initiation. Oh, uh, no, not really. No, You don't like have, that's not like a cliche there? No. So like, oh, because everyone's the same. Hazing, from what my understanding is from like movies and stuff, is is a new kid going into the team. Yeah. But like, where where I'm from, like the, the teams are aged. So if you're, if you're 15, you play at under 16 level. And it, once you're 16, you play at under 17 level. So, yeah. So you grow up with, every, you would never be the new kid in the team. No, ever. but you'd be on that level. Like say you're the highest level, the new guys, the new guy that just played on that high level for the first time maybe or something like that. But then you go into college. You but, move with your year group. So you, well, a lot oh, of this yeah. shit's college oriented, but yeah. well, yeah, you, I, th- I see what you're saying. And I think that maybe that is why that I never saw it. Cause I used to always hear about it playing hockey. You'd be like, oh, there's the team that they all had to fucking jizz on the cookie. And then someone had to eat the cookie. And then there's the other, the big one that I used to always hear was that they would tie a rope around the dick. <laughs> With the pucks? Yeah. A bucket of pucks. You've never heard any of this stuff? So <laughs> no. This, I don't yeah, know. The, this. the jizz on the cookie thing is- you heard that. Because that's called soggy biscuit. Soggy in, biscuit. In, in the UK. And it's a it's game- called that here too. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, you shouldn't be. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, it's the, the game is the last person to come has to eat the biscuit. So like you have a room with like 10 men. Or boys, uh, masturbate. Me and nine boys. <laughs> <laughs> Me and nine of my students. You know, just stuff. Yeah, last one to come eat the biscuit. Yeah, and the other one was they basically would tie a string around the guy's dick, and then it would go to a bucket, and the bucket would be empty, and then everyone would be shooting pucket pucks in the bucket, weighing the bucket down and weighing your dick down. <sighs> This is like so all the wives' tales that to be honest, I remember thinking, like, I hope I don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the Soggy Biscuit one is like the only I still have always been like, Do you know anybody who's ever done the closest is like our friend JJ says. He says he's done. But it. I don't know if I could be lying. Yeah. Well, this teacher, she's a woman's teacher, and basically got busted. Um what she, she was like a lesbian coach, I think. And then she had basically, she had a pretty good racket. She was like 56 years old and she made the kids, the like the college kids, which were underage, but w- underage, they mean college Yeah, kids. still called underage for America where they can't drink because they're 21. Yeah, but know. they basically had to s- skate around naked. And then also she was making them do like orgat uh, fucking bananas and condoms and all sorts of stuff. And she had this racket going for like a good like 20 years before she got busted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She kind of reminds me, reminds me of uh, female Mike Babcock. Well, what's that he, one? He used to be the Maple Leafs coach, and he kind of was like a huge dick. He wasn't hazing people, but he was like the biggest dickhead. Like, what kind of, of stuff would he do? He Well, this is the biggest one. So Jay, this guy, Jason Spezza, who was like in the NHL forever, and he had like a, a Iron Man or like a long playing streak going, and then his first game on the Maple Leafs, he scratched him. Healthy scratched him. Okay. To like ruin his streak or whatever. Everybody hated him. <laughs> piece of shit but and then basically what happened with this person is that i think around like 2016 when stuff started to get like heating up she sort of got in the crossfires when basically the harvard athletes uh they ranked last in satisfaction and then basically uh people started having mental health issues and coming and then going to the <laughs> they started being like because before she basically was going to the people being like there's nothing in this dressing room we won't know about but yeah so she's sort of done but yeah well that's that's hazing you can't do that anymore hazing became really not cool like really fast yeah like it was like it's just one of like those this th- they're like you can't do this anymore 
Well, yeah, because it's one of those things where, you, like, if you're new, you get told, oh, this is what we do. And because you want to fit in, you're like, okay, cool. I guess. And yeah. it only takes one person to go, you know, none of you should have ever had to do this. Sure, and everyone yeah, goes, yeah. I had a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, in the biscuit in oh, your mouth. Sure. Like, what? <laughs> We're ending this right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the it, frat and sorority stuff is nuts. Well, like, it's like they were doing it for, f- like, the sorority stuff. They're like, yeah, we've been doing this for 50 years. And then just, like, one year, they're like, okay, we're this is not. This is retroactively not okay. It's funnier when a girl does it, I guess. Yeah. Who is the main guy, the the main, like, the like pedophile coach? Sandusky? Sandusky. Who's, isn't there a big, like, or I guess if in the, where you're from, it's more the priest. But is there is there a so big, there, like, pedophile coach? Not a coach. There was a TV presenter. Called uh, Jimmy Savile. Yeah, Jimmy Savile. What's his deal? He's, oh, he, he was like a kids show, right? Like he, he, he was he gay? He, 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 I, he was indiscriminate. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'd fuck anything like that was young enough. He, um, he looked insane. He looked disgusting. <laughs> like, yeah. like if it. If an alien came to Earth and you described a paedophile to it, and Jimmy Savile was in the same room, it would go. There's one. (laughs) Like he, 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 and he hid so in plain sight. Like a lot of people knew about it. Yeah, like everybody at the BBC like knew he was just like a pedophile, right? Yeah, it's one thing. Yeah, people being like, "Oh, I know this guy's like just like a hound," but it's another thing being like, "I know he's having sex with kids." Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, Like that's like almost like. You're just as bad. He yeah. ran children's charities just so he could fuck the kids. Come on. I mean, I think that's a, there's a lot of that, He'd, right? He, he would go to children's hospitals and just be like, give me the keys to the ward and oh, he's fucking ill kids. The cancer ward. Yeah. Ge- like, genuinely, he was like the worst of the worst of the worst. <laughs> and he didn't go to jail. He died, right? Yeah, he died and this came out like came out publicly after That's so insane. Yeah. Did people at the BBC oh, he had the, he I think a, I remember this guy He now. was a sir. He was sir Jimmy Savile. He was, he was given a knighthood by the Queen. And then when he finally died, people came out. Is the reason because they couldn't come out before? Because, like... It just... There was a big, like, documentary. When did he die? Uh, I want to say... Was it, like, the day after Harvey Weinstein where he goes, you know what? Just, like... (laughs) I'm not going to hang on any longer. Uh, Lost his will to live. (laughs) 2015 hit that guy hard, bro. Oh, he's a disgusting cunt. He's so... And he's, like, the hack punchline of all the shit comics in the UK. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's no shortage of it. Yeah, I remember yeah. that's why I always say that. Like, there was one time when I was like telling, saying a girl's like, oh, yeah, she's like 25, stone. And then I like messaged my friend who's British, and I'm like, everyone says this, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> the minute I said it, I was just like, this is something that has been said at every British comic, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's just, there's a there's a few like hack punchline people, and the, like Joseph Fritzel was just a. Who's that? Do you know who Joseph Fritzl is? No. Never heard of him. So he uh, had two daughters and he locked them in a basement for their entire lives and fucked them like every day. Ugh. Um, Where was the mom? She was like, just like on she down with it. She's dinner. <laughs> She's cooking upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I thought this guy was a comic. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, he's just like, a I've bad guy. seen this guy's act. I, th- I think he was Austrian. Yeah, um, Austrian guy. Uh, he's like another hack punchline guy. He's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The ca- I mean, that was the Catholic priest stuff that got. That's what I was thinking. Like, do you know how, um, like, right wing people, their whole thing right now is like kind of like like everyone's a pedophile sort yeah. of thing. And but like forever, it was that Christians, like, then Catholics were pedophiles, right? Yeah. So it's like I was kind of. I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but that's what I was thinking last night when I, I was like, oh, everyone's calling everyone a pedophile because. Yeah. You, even online it's like yeah you're well your priests are pedophiles it's like well you're doing these drag shows so everyone's like a pedophile right but it's almost like the drag show stuff they need to get to the point where it's hack you know what i mean <laughs> like they need to make it hack yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean i've seen some drag shows it's hack uh, i've been it's pretty hack. but they need to get to the point where someone goes oh like you know like a ben shapiro comes out and goes like you know these these people i'm doing the drag shows for kids and we go oh another person talking about you <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it needs to get boring <laughs> yeah it is weird though the people on the right basically became like it was like the left wing people were free speech people and the right wing people were like anti-free speech and the pedophiles and then it kind of like switched it switches all the time. You, yeah, you guys, but it's like a full yeah. poll. You guys did a sketch like a about this, the, the yeah. racist woke thing. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's that all the time. Everything's <laughs> a fucking cartoon. Yeah. Anyone, it's not, because people think like the spectrum is like a, a, a straight line and there's left and right. It's actually a circle. And 
extreme left and right are both here and then the middle's up there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, the, the further away they get from the middle, the closer they get together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like sometimes with that stuff, it's like it, people make it political, but you're just like, yeah, I'll, people like to form groups and then try to control other groups. It's almost like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's just like the same thing as like a librarian or whatever. It's like you give these like little groups their power and then they want to start telling people what to do. Yeah. And it was like, the, you see, so you go, whenever, whenever you look at it, you go, oh, this group's not really telling people what to do. It's like, yeah, because they can't because no one listens to them right now. Yeah. As soon as they start like as soon as start people listen to them again oh, as sure. soon as anyone has got any sort of power to they just yeah. everyone abuses it if you give someone a high vis at like a concert <laughs> yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, who are you talking to yeah. <laughs> there was one thing that was making me laugh though a lot is that so, so i can't remember who it was alex byron i was just in calgary this weekend and he he uh, he showed me this. There was like some right wing guy that had his merch that was like mugs that say "Stop sexualizing kids," and it, but it's like just loving the idea of like who's buying that. That's a comics <laughs> merch. No, it was like a right wing oh, guy, but like just the idea of like going to work and like <laughs> putting your- <laughs> on your desk. <laughs> I mean, it's such a weird thing. And then staring at, like, someone else, like, just so you know, like, no sexualizing kids going on. (laughs) It's like, like, who would be against that? But then it's just so, like, nobody's like, what are you, got a problem with it? (laughs) Yeah. Some stuff is just better unsaid. Yeah, yeah well, it is very- it's like we, can, we have a consensus. I think. Well, the problem is, I guess, is I think we thought we had some sort of consensus, and then there's like not. Well, it's the version of the you know the like the punk thing where it's like the swastika like crossed out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which is always like I mean that's kind of like a hack joke, but it is really like you know just like a photo of a, a black guy getting lynched, but it's crossed out. Like just so you know, I don't like this. Right. You're like, but that's the the head of house. Like, like it's one step away from having like a kid getting molested. Like, and you're yeah, like, just. just- <laughs> Like a guy taking like nude photos of child. Like just so you know, this is the we don't like We're child porn mug. See the line, <laughs> line through it, it's faded a bit from the sun, but it, it was definitely there before. Very yeah, prominent. There, there is a day where you've washed that shit too many times, <laughs> and it's all of a sudden got the opposite message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like a guy beating his wife, and you're like, "No, are you idiot?" It's just a- circled. Yeah, just- <laughs> yeah, just circled. <laughs> the lines just eroded. <laughs> oh, we were dying thinking about that. Just like bringing your mug, putting it down, then staring at one of the guys. <laughs> just so you know, if you want to sexualize kids, it's gonna be happening over there, not yeah. in this area. That guy, you know what that's a good mug for? Is you go to like Starbucks and you go, "Yeah, I brought my own mug from home. Fill it up." <laughs> Please stop sexualizing kids' Tumblr. <laughs> Fill it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the whole gear. I'm like the hat the thing. This guy hates sexualizing kids, dude. <laughs> Nothing he hates more. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is then the other one. There was basically Colorado woman having sex with thirteen year old, and then she's basically having the guy's kid. And then eighteen. This is probably more. This is the one you're right. It was in the UK. Yeah. Eighteen female guards were fired, and they resigned from a very cushy UK prison. So I guess like a rich prison for having hookups yeah. with inmates. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm. Did you not hear about this story then? No. Okay, you come over here and you don't pay attention. <laughs> I'm like that with Canada. Uh, it's like, in <laughs> Wales, so maybe that's why you didn't. Do you do you know a lot about what's going on in Wales? I mean, Wales, like they won't forgive me for saying this, but like it's such a small country. Yeah, tiny. It's tiny. Yeah, so yeah. it's like we do. Get I've been doing news. a joke about Tommy Cooper. Actually, you know who that guy is. Yeah, he had a heart attack and died on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's the joke? <laughs> Just that he died that my because there's so many people having heart attacks right now and then uh, my fear is that I'll have a heart attack because when he's having the heart attack on stage everybody's like laughing they think it's like the funniest thing <laughs> that's a fear of yours now yeah. <laughs> myocarditis it's oh, there you go. and YouTube just put that right there thanks <laughs> there was another comic a UK like Seika comic who had the same thing happen had a heart attack on stage yeah his name was Ian Cognito that was his stage name oh, oh crappy stage tough. Name. <laughs> he was he was fucking Ian Cognito he, 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 he had like he was like a circuit legend in the UK where like it, when he died every comic had a story about him like something he'd done or like something they seen him do he was like he like used what to, kind of stuff did he do so he used to open his set by walking on stage hammering a nail into the wall and then hanging his coat on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was a loved him at the clubs uh, well he got banned from a lot of clubs because he was just <laughs> fucking around 
Like I, the last time I ever seen him, he was at a club in Liverpool called Baby Blue, and uh, have to piss quick. Man. He, Actually, I think I've heard of this guy. He, yeah, he died re- fairly recently, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has like really wacky hair. Like he had like really long hair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah, he I, went on stage and uh, are we still going or do? Yeah, yeah, we're still going. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, he uh, he went on stage in Liverpool when I seen him, and he asked the guy on the front row, "Can I have a drink out of your pint?" Yeah, and the guy said no. So Ian took his cock out, put it in the guy's pint, and swished it round put it back and then said how about now <laughs> <laughs> that's like so crazy that, that is like something where there was like this overlap where this guy's like yeah in the 80s this was probably like murdering sticking your dick in uh someone's beer and then they're like yeah it's not really acceptable anymore how about now <laughs> that was the big closer <laughs> that was the big closer the dick in the beer <laughs> that was this guy yeah it's ian cognito he, he asked the guy could he have a drink of his pint and the guy said no so he put his dick in it and said how about now <laughs> how about now <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. So that's the kind of stories that he yeah, had yeah, kicking yeah. around about him. Okay, so incognito. And then, so basically, and that guy was from Wales, is that what you're saying? No, he's from the UK. But I only brought him up because he also died on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. He had oh, a heart attack on stage. stage. By the way, not no laughing matter. No, but hey, no better place to go, eh, boys? <laughs> <laughs> incognito dies on stage. The BBC managed to hold off on saying it was no laughing matter. Oh, we're saying that every article about comedy always says it's no laughing matter. <laughs> 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 yeah, they fucking did. There was a montage once, and it was like hey, seventy-five articles of things that weren't a laughing matter. <laughs> I, I could see Juicy being like, you know, the but but you getting the robbed was no laughing matter. <laughs> <laughs> Spend an hour joking about it. It's no laughing matter. That is, I I, I like. I'm pretty in. Like I love. Of, I don't follow that many, but I do love when a good like jail TikTok comes up, and it's like it really is exposing. Like, dude, I see it pretty often where like a jail TikTok comes up, and the guy's like, "Hey, here's my like big screen TV. Here's my yeah. this. Like, here's my cooking station. Like, here's my PS5. Like, yeah, they have all sorts. And then some of them like, yeah, I guess it depends where you go because this one in the U- Wales, it's like it looks like what you would expect when they talk about like you know club fed or whatever like there's no bars it all like it's brand new like it looks like a high school like a new high right. school was built or something well <laughs> but- it's quite a good place to send all these pedophile teachers yeah but the thing is they had all these hot chicks <laughs> working at them and then they they uh, they fired 18 of them for having sex with a uh, Yo, 18 female guards. And like, you see the photos. That's like most, like, most, like a big percentage of guards are like banging. These are all like mug shotties. But if you're a woman who's into bad guys, why would you not get that job? And then Do you think that's what them? happens? Oh, you think that's there? The, yeah, the, I think they're the, like, I like a bad boy and I might as well just go to prison and just fuck all of them. Yeah. Like I would. Yeah, I guess that's kind of a, a good deal. And then you just go <laughs> I just didn't, I get, well, <clears throat> first of all, it's weird because I was picturing like, okay, I can see how like gang leader, like if you're a fucking gangster or something like that or a mafia guy, like those guys are probably pretty good with women. You know what I mean? They've yeah. all been like, you know, womanizers to some degree. So they have all the moves. They know how to seduce a guard or whatever. And they also like kind of have money on the outside. But this is like hot, like white collar almost. Yeah, but it wasn't. So it's like, this is like the- some nerd guy that got like <laughs> some bank fraud guy. But it's not. They said one of them was a drug dealer. One of them was okay, a guy, so- one of them a guy who like killed someone in a car. But like the chicks are like sort of good to know though that you can go to jail and be like cruising like that. <laughs> yeah, I also don't know why they've been fired. Like, what have they actually done wrong? Sure. Like, like genuinely, what? Who are they hurting? Yeah. I mean, the I'm with getting you. Fucked, they're getting fucked. Like, why, why, it's why probably more than just like, yeah, it's still kind of supposed to be prison for them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be fucking in. They, they should be having sex with other inmates that are men. I wonder if there's any guys that like are the male guards that was like, come out. I got a little treat for you, ladies. And the girls are like, oh, we're not interested. Yeah, in you yeah. <laughs> the guy thought like he thought he was. Like, yeah, for sure. The guys are like, dude, these chicks will bang anybody, and then they're trying to get in there. Like, oh, <laughs> the male guard that goes to the female guards, being like, listen, I, I guess you. You heard that uh, some of us guards are putting out it's your lucky day and the girls are like get away from us <laughs> you know i'm a bit of a bad boy myself <laughs> i really didn't realize that this that you can it was that easy to get fucking sniz if you're in jail i don't think it is in, 18 not in on the market <laughs> yeah in one lot. prison one yeah it's crazy also, female guards in one prison also what prison has 18 female guards this one there? The best damn prison in the world. <laughs> That's which one. Imagine finding out you were getting sent there. I was sent you to life, but you're going to the pussy <laughs> prison. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. I you, won't appeal as long as you send me to that one. That's the top <laughs> lawyer that knows how to get you into that prison. They got laptops, TVs. They got all lap this dances. stuff. Lap dances. They have state of the art. So they're cruising facility. at this prison. Sports facility. Yeah, it looks. Pretty yeah, it did it did seem like their life is very cushy? Like you're basically just playing. You wake up, play intramural baseball. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, this is play poker for a while. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Yeah, cruising on that life. Yeah. The other funny one that was making me laugh was because uh, there's there's basically like all these women that I actually was doing a joke about it like a while ago, but there's a couple of them popped up. But there's like a lot of these women that have basically they handled guys with disabilities and they started doing uh, they started offering a service pretty publicly. It used to be like more black market where basically it'll be a girl be like, yeah, we I'll take your like disabled son or whatever who can't move and then come like jack him off. Yeah. And like they basically made this video about it and I was like watching it and all the guys are like it's pretty wild she has it on her website and it's these guys that are like her girl's name is like Susan Sue Sue Newsome and she basically has these guys they're like the breathing tube and legitimately the guys are like we like her coming <laughs> it's like dude <laughs> wait is she the one doing it yeah Sue Newsome oh I thought she was like arranging it oh so she's you're doing the jack and West she's older too <laughs> Yeah, but it is always makes me laugh the idea of like imagine because she's sort of doing a press tour of like what a nice person she is. But it just makes me laugh. Imagine like the, the sixty year old guy that'd be like, I'm just fingering all these girls that can't move. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's, but the fact that they showed all the guys that were getting service, they showed the disabled Johns, <laughs> and their mom pays for them, which like I guess is. There is nothing really wrong no, with it. No, nothing wrong, yeah. It's but like, it's like, why am I hearing about it? <laughs> <laughs> where did you hear I feel like... By the way, where did you hear about this? Uh, it went viral, and uh, then people in our Patreon, uh, right, in, the, okay. in the Discord sent it to me. There's like all these videos, but like... <laughs> Ryan's holding himself a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> A wheelchair and a bell. She's gonna be like <laughs> Salamanca. <laughs> just fucking dinging away. <laughs> the phony. <laughs> That's, the guy orders the fake scooter. Comes in. She realizes the the mouth tube's not attached to anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, after she finishes, he gets up and walks off. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Well, Sue, you do good work. Anyway, <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, She's like, what? <laughs> getting up and walking off. Oh, Kaiser Soze. Just uh, yeah, my assistant's going to come pick up the chair. <laughs> <laughs> he does a Kaiser Soze. <laughs> 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 yeah, because he has the breathing tube, and halfway through, he's like, "Yeah, slower." She goes, "Why are you talking?" No, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, she, she's in the UK, actually. I told you I was trying to get some UK news. The other one is getting the chair. <laughs> I'm not getting the chair. You're getting the chair. <laughs> Gotta take another quick second here to tell you about our Patreon. This is valuable ad space Ooh. that we are removing from the normal Ooh. program to tell you about what we've been going on the Patreon right now. Every week we do an additional episode, yep. especially when we do guest episodes. We do, you got your classic Ryan and Danny episode, banger articles, banger reddits. Feet pics. Feet, feet pics. There's the discord that everyone's talked. We're doing <laughs> Q and A's. When every time we do guests like today, we do polls where everyone can Surprise ask streams. Questions. Surprise live streams. Surprise streams because me and Danny meet up once a week to do uh, podcast stuff and we do surprise streams. We're going to be doing surprise Q and A's and we are also about 40 patrons away from doing a uh, our first reality show, yep. which is the Bugman versus Bugman, which is a manliness competition mm -hmm. with me and Danny, which will be starting at 2000, which we are just never something. been closer to. No. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. Support the boys. So, and also we use that money to do all sorts of things and we're flying around for some guests coming yeah, up. Yeah, we are. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. Sign it up. <laughs> I saw the one thing that someone sent me is that, you know, that like guys that are into semen retention. 
What? Do you know what that is? <laughs> no. So the bass leader is kind of popping off. It's basically like it started this. with like Muhammad Ali. He was like the the OG guy. And the idea is if you prevent yourself from coming, that you like you retain all these powers. And they're saying clarity of mind, no mental clutter, better stamina, power in the gym, no depression, better term memory, and all the and hair grows thicker. It says <laughs> there's, there's no way. It seems like the opposite. But not coming gives you clarity of yeah, mind. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. That post, was the real post one. Post no clarity is a thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 There's uh no way. But I, yeah, I guess Makes Muhammad no Ali, his whole thing was like two weeks before a fight. But I thought it was like to make him angrier. That was like a caged animal. Yeah, you're right. Like I that's, thought it was like to piss him yeah. off more, not to make him more clear in his yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I finish like jerking off to a, a porn video and I have to put my phone in another room for a bit. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't believe I was enjoying that. <laughs> I will say, do you live with your girl? No. Okay. I will say that like the uh, the like don't jerk off movement. I feel like has been really popping off online lately. Yeah, no fap. It has. I feel like three years. Three. I feel like I never heard about it for my entire life. And in the last three or four years, I've been hearing about it, like a lot. It's like kind of popping off. I don't know. Do you find that? Yeah, it's just fucking stupid. It started with no nut November, didn't it? Because they were uh-huh. trying. Like, it's just like what? no nut November. Like I get that it was kind of funny almost. Yeah, it's like like kind of like I, f- I I can't tell what element. And you of were sort of like I think November November you're supposed to like raise money for prostate cancer or something. There was it was almost like a joke. No, that was Movember. Okay, so not for, so I don't I mean, know. Movember was for prostate cancer. No, no November. <laughs> I mean, the no, some of the no fat people are like, yeah, it's this is like porn's like ruining my life. Yeah, but then I think some people are just they they do it as like a discipline. I don't know. People a lot of people okay. But here's my question. Okay, so I guess there is that for addiction. But if if porn was ruining your life, and you stopped it, that would probably be ruining your life too. The constantly wanting to would be also ruining your life. Yeah, but I guess they they see it as like oh this is you know they see it as heroin. I like, think yeah, that there's no be- win though. You know how you're like an it's like this Tiger Woods with the sex addict. Yeah, you're just you know what I mean. You're like. I have a wife even if you're not doing it you're just like I'm still an addict I'll not <laughs> yeah well I what mean, do they say like I'm, I'm an addict has never recovered I'm yeah, an addict has yeah. never recovered <laughs> you like that's <laughs> it's funny though like if the, being the sex addict and being with your like wife and you're getting like the different rings and for, like, yeah, oh, the chips you're getting the, the chips, chips yeah. and she's like what's that it's like two weeks strong <laughs> <laughs> this is my one year chip you're like you haven't rubbed around in a year no that's you banging other girls I guess oh that's for the sex addicts they probably do get that but you are like Tiger Woods, there's no scenario where Tiger Woods is like cured. It was like, you know, th- even if he's like, okay, I'm not banging other girls, he's still like. Probably not helping too. He's a pro athlete, so he's getting testosterone boosts and like he's probably on TRT and all this stuff that's like. Oh. Even if it was kind of waning, then that brings Whoa. it all back. That's like such a good point that I didn't even think about. Yeah. Because even when I'm like working out, I feel like I've got a little more drive in Yeah. It's the, t- it's the test, you know? That is true. Yeah, it's, it's tough for time. But I think the semen retention stuff's like a total load of shit. <laughs> Could be. Do you know, I'll, I'll, um, I don't know. So, do you know? Okay, actually, there's one. This is someone sent. It's like a boys' question that we do. Um, be, uh, first, I want to ask you about this joke thing after. But there's this woman who walked out of a date uh, with this guy and went viral on TikTok basically because this dude wouldn't pay three dollars for the extra cheese. Oh, I yeah, love this guy. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> this guy's in New York. I was reading this. I go, we got we got to get him on the show on like the Patreon or something. So basically, the girl being like, we I knew he was cheap because he would ask for the extra cheese was three bucks. He said he wouldn't pay it. Then it kind of went viral. And then basically, most people were on the dude's side. Like the tides turned. Oh yeah. yeah and then the guy made a video of. Him. Himself eating the cheese or whatever, so yeah. it's total like W for dudes. Big gun, Big but gun. that does go to. Uh, but the question is more like, would you have the guts on like a first date to ask for something and then them tell you the price and then say no? I would not. I ask don't think how I would much have the it. cheeses. They could honestly like tell me any price. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that could be like a racket that women and restaurants heirs could <laughs> set up where they're like I bring know. first dates here yeah. and like we've, oh we've changed the menu today and it's now like four hundred dollars per person. I'd be like, is it really? <laughs> oh, well, all right. Enjoy this, love. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm the yeah. exact same way. Once I've asked, I would like you. As soon as you ask, you like, what are you doing? Yeah, no way. To- I mean, it, yeah, it was not like uh, the best move. Uh, on his part to be like how much is they go do you want cheese and he goes how much is that extra and they go three dollars and he goes i think i'm good <laughs> i feel like being a cheap but i also agree i go three dollars for a slice of cheese of course. It, is, it is too much but new york city well new york yeah the price are crazy that's Everything why being like a cheap guy 
takes a bit of like I don't know if you've ever been a cheap guy like that dating but like it almost takes you got to plan you know the places you're going and you have to be like oh we'll pop over here like oh did it happen to be half price today like you have to <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I do the one up they go do you uh want a slice of cheese on your burger i go way ahead of you got one brought one with me <laughs> you guys have got uncor- like an uncorking fee for cheese you go can you just throw that on there what's that like 50 cents <laughs> uncorking fee <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to a, it was a surprising I went to because there's this new comedy club that's BYOB here and then uh, which comedy club the 7th street it's BYOB yeah you just bring your own like just people show up with packs of white claws and stuff oh, and beers cool. or whatever but then I went to a sushi restaurant in Brooklyn shout out Luke Tuma yeah yeah and I, and, uh, I went to a sushi restaurant and we went there and we would go, go can we get drinks and they go we're BYOB I thought restaurants. that would be like illegal I don't know if they lost their license or what. Maybe not, because you wouldn't be. But then they're like, yeah, there's like a... Oh, I just went to a bodega. But it's like a nice sushi restaurant. And they were like, yeah, we don't sell alcohol. One thing that I do always remember about like when I went to UK like 10 years ago was your money's so much heavier that it does feel cooler buying a pint with coins. And they're giant. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it do, so if you feel like a miner almost. You know what I mean? Like a, <laughs> just like, you got some... Whoosh, yeah. <laughs> it does have a lot more. <laughs> what a heft. Actually, let's do a few more of these questions that everyone wanted to ask. Okay. Um, people actually were asking a lot about your accent and then stupid soccer questions. Do you like Patty Pimblet? Yeah, he, he went to my school. Wait, what? He was three years below me in school, yeah. Oh, you grew up with him? Sort of? Oh, you didn't know him. No, he's he's done our podcast a couple of times now. He's, That's he's why. Podcast. So he's like yeah. your body, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seems like a pretty cool guy. He's dead sound. He's uh, he's just had some surgery. He can't fight for a while, but uh, yeah. Where he's, is what's the stereotype where British people don't have good teeth or don't brush their teeth? Uh, I don't know where it comes from, but uh, it is true. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and yeah, I don't. I like everyone. Just does seem to have like cracked smiles and stuff. Like I've got at the minute, I've got an Invisalign. I've took it out for this because. You okay, yeah, so yeah. I'll be spitting everywhere, but uh, yeah, everyone's teeth are a little sort of misshapen and stuff. It, it's I don't know where it comes. We do brush our fucking. Yeah, teeth, that's what I'm saying. That's but like, like it's the, still a pretty modern. Society. How many times a day do British people brush? Uh, twice. Okay. Yeah, seems, Morning and night seems like, pretty normal. Yeah. When you think it's up, like some of them in the water, like or not enough fluoride. <laughs> I, I I've got no idea where it comes from, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of people get braces in the UK. A lot of people were asking about your accent. People asking if uh, if your accent got in the way of you smashing chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I like, mean, I can't imagine in Liverpool. It's he's issue. saying even it is though, like or oh. in in the UK, Liverpool is a very divisive. Like, do you, do you city. have like a low class accent? Do some people see it as that? Some people do. Yeah. So Liverpool is a proper working class city where, like, it's not seen as like anyone's doing well there. Like a, it's like a hillbilly accent, sort of. No, not quite. Not that, that, that's that's more like the southwest of England, but like it's just seen as working. More like class. a I don't know if you know America, but maybe more like how people would like from Boston or Bo- Philadelphia Boston, or something. Boston's that be- kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Liverpool's it's like better for a guy than a girl, probably too. It's just, yeah, but it's very divisive. Liverpool as a city, people either love it and they're like, "Oh my god, I love the Scouse accent," or they they just hate it. There's no one who's like, "I could take it or leave it." <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like an uppity thing to probably be against it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the rest of England, Liverpool is seen as a bit of a republic within the country. Yeah, oh, like Liverpool don't like Liverpool fans, like football fans, don't normally support the England national team. We just don't fucking care. Have you ever really? Seen? You guys don't. Yeah. You're just like fuck them. It's it's not like fuck them. It's just like I don't care. Like I want Liverpool. Like Liverpool are playing right now, and yeah, it is yeah. itching me. I mean, you were literally watching not, it like as we were setting before up. Before we started, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You were just like how to get. Um, right. But like when England lose, I'm like, nah. like in the World Cup, you're just like whatever. Yeah. Like the pubs, I w- the I pubs w- in Liverpool are like they're not like overflowing, or they are, but just, no, they're not, they're not. They're not as busy for that as they would be for the Liverpool game. What? No. Is that who, like, when you grew up, like, is your squad that you went to high school with, I guess, or, like, college with, is that, like, soccer hooligan types? Uh, not hooligans, no. Like, that. that's a very sort of uh, small group of people who like the sport. Like, we just want to go to the pub and drink and yeah. So was your So was the... your crew of people, like, where did you hang out with, like, artist type people or, like, or just, like, blokes? Just not, <laughs> like, I, I only hang out with artists like people now because of comedy, but, like, they're just normal lads who've got... 
like normal jobs engineers yeah. and uh shit like that yeah. but like okay i always say that like my high school was kind of more like a movie high school in a lot of ways that we really had like the italian kids were over here then there was like the the, the punk kids and there was like the rapper guy like it really was like that so it was also like a prism but then it <laughs> to be honest it is like that's what people always say it's like uh sit with, with the races prison that's yeah. why people when they're like a lot of the you know new like progressive stuff it's like people say like oh they're trying to get prison politics in real life yeah. <laughs> but there, it was and then in america a lot of schools where they were just like there was like the athletes and then the outsiders like it was almost but like in your school was it less like groups like that yeah so like my school was a specialist sports college so I've, like a lot of people who went there were like there's a lot of people who were in my year at school who went on to play football or soccer for like in the mls or lower leagues in england um and then but there was no like jocks and then them there was there was the nerdy bullyable kids and uh-huh. then, uh huh it were like the bottom 10 percent, and then there was 80 percent of just all very similar people which i was in and then there was just the people who were really good at football at the very top, the top ten percent. That's the most popular. Is like gets the most girls. Is like you're good at the best at sports. Yeah. What are the yeah. nerds at sports school? Like darts? No, they, they, no. They, like what sports they, are they? So they're not playing sports. Oh, they're not like, playing, oh, but they're out oh, of sports school. It's it's called a specialist sports college oh. because the sporty people go there. But that there's is, also a lot of people there who just that, that is actually it, honestly so. a bucket list, list thing that I've always wanted to do is go see like darts. Yeah, darts is a in fun day out. Oh, That's your man. bucket list, isn't no, it? No, it's like one like no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like bucket list. Dream ever. It's <laughs> one of them. It's among <laughs> dude. You ever watch? Guys like I want to have a threesome with fucking six super models. <laughs> Danny's like, fly me to Liverpool to watch darts. <laughs> dude, you never watched them back in the day? They used to, on TSN in Canada. They used to have like the uh, crazy, no, I didn't. The darts championship. It was, oh, like, it's, it's in a giant like beer hall or it's whatever. It's like. And the people who, first off, the guys who are the, who play, they're all just like alcoholics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They're just fat old men. <laughs> they're like fat old men. That's cool. I, I, I do like, like Some that. of them have like these like crazy like <laughs> blue like mohawks and shit. And any one of them would have been a better lead for the whale than <laughs> Brendan Fraser. <laughs> and then it just goes, they, and then people just go, they'll throw the thing and then the guy's like, 180. And then they go crazy. It's, I don't know. It is and everybody's good, smashed. It is a good day they, They're smashed like even in the championship. Championships? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they have like, uh, yeah, yeah. They suck. They like, they don't do it now because of like the whole alcohol and sport thing. But like, up until about five or ten years ago, the people in the final would be like drinking, sipping, have a pint, sipping pints in between yes. darts. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> And they're in a beer hall, and everybody's just like going nuts. Is that because there's not really any money in it? Oh no, there is. No, a lot there of money is. In it. They're like famous. But you think if like so much money is on the line, you wouldn't be drinking beer? No, but a lot of these men are just better drunk. They're yeah, alcoholics, yeah, so yeah. that's what keeps them shaking. It's you know, like, it's have like you ever been like four pints in playing pool, and you're like, you yeah. just oh, hit, like, a I got streak. the. G- yeah, but you think that like it's kind of one of those things when you're like first starting something like stand up, you might be like, oh, get rid of the nerves by having some drinks, but like hopefully when you're at like a higher but, level, but, but they've just never not. Don't and it? There they've, is comics. That they've are just, like, they've that just like there's a lot of comics who like after a drink are so much it. better, and they don't know how to do it properly without it. Yeah. And these dark players with those guys, they're probably just like you know, it's like your your hands don't shake quite as much. So Especially it's like, if you like he I said, mean, you've John, always played like that. John Daly always said like John Daly the golfer was like, yeah, he's always drinking. What? Yeah. Before like you know he he sneak him in just. I definitely wouldn't be better at golf with a couple of cranks in me. No, 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 no. But once you're like, you know, on that super high level, and I mean, most players probably aren't, but yeah, the darts, I don't know. That shit was wild. Um, okay. Apparently, I actually don't know anything about this, but there is something that everyone said there was like this big deal uh, kind of in London called the Comedy Collective Facebook group. Okay. Do you yeah. know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was apparently. It was like a place for gig. This person said it was a place for gig opportunities and comedy advice, and then it became like this big, like cultural thing where everyone was getting kicked out and fought. And do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Someone so, told me to ask you about it. Oh, it's it's. I mean, it's. Is it's, it not that interesting? It's not really worth talking about, but it's it's okay. a Facebook group where what would happen was occasionally someone would post, "Oh, there's a spot going tonight. It's you know fifty pounds for fifteen minutes. Does anyone want it?" 
and you get a load of comments below. But then it starts with anyone could join it. So people who'd never stood on stage would join and be like, I'm thinking of starting comedy and I hate gays. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> and then it would just be a billion comments of going, this is actually really against the community spirit of the comedy. And it would just cause mad arguments. Okay. But then you would get more experienced comics who were bored, like me, for example, just going in and just saying horrific stuff to wind everyone up. And then you'd get like a load of people replying to you going, this is bang out of order. And I'm like, no, I actually think that like we should exclude every one of colour from comedy like <laughs> it's not for them and it would just people would like wind people up people take it really seriously and it's just a cesspit of a Facebook group uh, yeah. which is every comedy that, yeah. ours group. was the same sort of yeah, thing yeah. One, yeah well do you know okay so in Sydney there was this like speaking of kind of what we were talking about before in Sydney there was like this like gay dude and he did some joke about Jesus and then uh, Muslims and Christians got together and protested mm -hmm. it recently and he basically it was like pretty kind of of like yeah, it's, like I guess it's good to see religious people, joke, religious people becoming dweebs again. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of. But they, like, they had their moment where they were kind of cool. Where you go, yeah, they're like, they're like, yeah, we were free speech, and anything goes. And then they're like, don't make fun of Jesus again. And you go, <laughs> well, that's what before it kind of happens to me a lot, where people, I'll say, I'll do like, I actually released one recently where it was like a, a something about Christians, and people were like, you wouldn't say that about Muslims, and I go, I do though, <laughs> and then you know what I mean, and they'll be like something about girls, and they'll be like, you wouldn't say that about this group, and I go, yeah, I do that. Oh yeah, Jews. They'll go, you something about this? You go, you wouldn't say that about Jewish people. I go, I do though, and then I was like, no, you're right, not like, oh, you wouldn't say that about Jews. He goes. <laughs> well yeah but it's kind of what the, the thing is it's like you're like well you no, you're not really fighting something you're just like a guy that's like offended yep. <laughs> but that's so the reason i kind of wanted to ask you about it is because i feel like like y there was other people that were saying like the uk is like the hub for craziness and then you kind of online were like it's not that crazy yeah, yeah like yeah. it's kind of being overblown oh that was i was talking about this with colin as well when uh, the guys from Trigonometry went on Joe Rogan. Yeah, and, um, we had them here too. Yeah, yeah. It, it but they they're just lying. Like it, it, like there's a lot of bollocks that was just spouted on that podcast. Like I, I didn't see them on this, but like the the clips I was watching from Rogan, where they're like, oh, if you do anything provocative on stage, you get banned from all the comedy clubs. And it's like you, one club. You no, it's not even one club. There's just there's a couple of venues that run in London and nowhere else like safe space comedy nights yeah which I actually think are a good thing because then it keeps all the fucking people who don't want anything provocative yeah going there and, and stay out. in your area yeah for sure and, and we'll we'll have comedy clubs and they, they look at this one night or these two nights and go oh, these safe space things are bad because that like I couldn't play there. Then they'll whinge about like, oh, the comedy store don't book me. And they think it's because they're edgy. It's actually because they're not good enough. Constantin, who... Or sometimes maybe just don't. Like a lot of times people, it's like you don't even... You kind of like aren't doing stand-up as much. Like you're not... Like a lot of times... Maybe you can tell me. Actually, you've like Constantin was I'm a wrong. newer act who blew up quickly because he, he, he got on the news... Because he got booked to do a university campus and they uh, they made him they sign a sign contract. Thing, right? But yeah. like he was a new comic. He was a, a couple of years in. And he then, because of the thing, and he lent into the sort of right-wing rhetoric which led to trigonometry, he's got like this big following now, which means yeah, he, he, it. he never had chance to do the work in the clubs and become a really good comic because he got a fan base before he had any yeah, miles yeah. on stage so it's I'm not I'm, I'm not slagging him saying he's a terrible comic and he was always going to be he didn't have a chance to learn how to be good but now he's leaning into this oh I'm, I'm banned from all the comedy clubs because I'm too edgy he isn't he just never got good enough to get past at them yeah that's what happened and that's what and it annoys me because I like to be a bit provocative on stage and sort of, you know, juicy is a bit different, but with other stuff, I will, you know, it's quite an Americanized style of stand-up where it's, here's the concept and here's the jokes, and it's not necessarily a concept that the audience all agrees with when you first say it, but the jokes run them around and you all have a nice time. I get lumped in with right-wing free speech comics because I'm joking about dodgy subjects, and the the American comedy circuit is a lot more willing to let comics do that than the UK is. There's not a lot of people doing that yet over there. All right, yeah. It's becoming more and more like that because of the globalization of comedy. Netflix and YouTube and podcasting has made everyone sort of share fan bases and share audiences and share styles. But th these people are like, you can't do this in clubs or you get banned. No, you just have to be able to do it well. And just going on stage and opening with a rape joke, wh which isn't a good one, will make 500 people go, no. We've all yeah. seen that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, 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 th and that's what is annoying because I'm telling you, I make a living, but without even doing touring and selling my own tickets from comedy clubs booking me 
to do the type of material they're telling you that comedy clubs ban you for. I I do know I do actually know what you mean because I've I've had that like I, I've gone especially doing the stuff like I've go on a lot of podcasts where they'll be like oh you can't make jokes anymore and you're like well I do it four times a night in yeah. New York yeah. like you know you're just kind of like like yeah you're you're but though I guess where I think there's t- two parts of and this is why I'm like maybe I kind of see where they're coming from too like where. I, I sort of agree in the comedy clubs. I've always said like, yeah, comedy clubs, most clubs like are owned by a guy that's cool. They're not pussies, but like the, the, the industry, maybe it's like, you're like, yeah, I can't get, uh, you know, that like the, the idea of like becoming a comic and like being like an edgy comic. And then that leads to this and this and this, maybe that's a less of a thing. So you, if you're going to be edgy now, you're like, okay, you're going to be a podcaster. You're going to be a YouTuber. Yeah. Like you're probably not going to go where you might have five years ago gone on like, or 10 years ago gone on like Comedy Central for example like the thing did all change so if you were in 2015 where like it did kind of get wild and then maybe you kind of stepped away from the comedy scene you might be like oh it's crazy and, and there's a part of me where it was like it was like that for like a moment but the comedy club thing like even yeah, out I mean there was a comedy club sense? here that I'm not going to name and the booker was straight up like pretty much like that yeah she yeah. <laughs> but again there's so many clubs here but there are so many clubs but yeah it depends I always it's such a but it weird wasn't a, thing. It wasn't specifically edgy. In Canada, it was worse. The same way as like, you know when you go to like a little scene sometimes and there's like five people that run that scene yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're just kind of like, if they're that, then then you're screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. And but what, London's probably not. Yeah, London's it's a big like place and what, there's what, clubs. You're, what you're saying is right. It's about TV and the industry in, in general and that bit, but I don't know when there was ever a time where you could be completely wild on TV because they've always been behest to their advertisers and their license payers and stuff. Like, any TV comedy has always been a little bit sanitized, and it's got worse, absolutely. But those guys are saying comedy clubs are banning people for doing risky stuff, and that isn't yeah, happening. Is not happening. No, I don't agree in comedy clubs either. Yeah, it just isn't a thing. It's bollocks. Yeah, yeah it is like such a s- s- nuanced thing, I guess, because you're just like, obviously there's... Yeah, it's like it's almost like you're like, there is shit that's happening that's annoying, but you're maybe like, it's not really that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. There's annoying stuff, but then... It's it's the same with every part of culture or uh, stuff with t- cancel culture and this. Everyone goes, oh no, this is happening. It's really really awful and it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. And you know, comedy clubs are banning us for doing edgy stuff. And then the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater because there is a problem that is worth talking about. But when you shroud it in as much bollocks as they have, then the actual issue gets thrown out, and everyone's like, there's no problem. There is. It's just not what you're saying it is. Okay. And yeah. you're stopping the conversation with reasonable people because you're pretending that you've been banned from the comedy store because you're edgy. Not that the audience didn't laugh enough. Yeah, yeah I guess Or that's, like the booker just doesn't like you. Yeah, whatever, which, which is entirely... Like, and people are allowed to book who they want at the club yeah. as well. It happens all the time. It's almost evened out now a little bit to where what you're saying, where there's like, yeah, there's like the club comics and here's the clubs and if you're good, you can do what you want and then there's like the, the gay scenes and if you want to, you know, whatever, yeah. go like... Sure. I mean, Brooklyn, like Brooklyn has lots of those shows where you're like... That's the booker you were talking about where she was like, abortion. <laughs> there was like, when they did abortion <laughs> pass and she goes, I guess I won't be booking any more white male comics because of abortions. Because there's no... Because they... <laughs> repeal Roe v. Wade and she's like well until they uh, undo that I guess I'm not booking any white male comics you're like what and like first off if that is true keep it to yourself like why are you publicizing that you're not doing this it's nuts yeah you don't have to say that yeah, you don't have to say it like it's not like the white male comics were like on the supreme court like yeah uh, yeah so like yeah it does go back and forth and it sort of does switch but like there was a one that was like there was a uh, article that we like talked a little bit last week, but it was like going in on podcaster bros. And I actually seen a lot on the internet of, of people being like white male podcasters. Like, Oh, give a guy actually saw one with Chris Williams. And it was like another white guy with a microphone like that. And it was like, a part of me was like, yeah, cause you kicked us out of the other thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, put me in movies. Then I'll stop. Put the mic down. <laughs> Wait, I had that on, um, we had a comment on one of our uh, TikTok clips from our podcast, and it was not everybody needs a podcast. <laughs> You're like, like, we're pretty popular. <laughs> like, I'll screenshot our Patreon page and 
print it and post it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like you, 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 these people just don't get it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're just like, yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, this is crappy. It was like, listen, we have our own thing going on here <laughs> that you aren't invited to, to be honest. And you're just like, yo, you, you're not, you almost just want to shut the door on them. Be like, yeah. hey, we got our podcast thing going on over here, uh, and we're making videos and doing our podcast with our friends, and everyone's selling tickets. And <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Some people's minds are so Bye-bye. stuck. <laughs> so stuck in like just TV where they go like, yeah, this should, should be for everybody. And then when they see something that's not for everybody, they're like, what? Yeah. Why isn't this for me? And Why isn't know, this designed specifically for me? Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's, I don't know. It's not. Oh, we want to kick you on a podcast and be like, well, you don't own that. So bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, they were like sort of brought up as they did like the, like it, it does go recently they did a thing where basically they said like if people did resumes that had like pronouns on them or whatever yeah um basically they kind of said that uh people were less likely to get hired yeah did you see that yeah, study? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and i was like it is sort of true that like, to be honest in comedy this is what i sort of argue with like sometimes even like our fans sometimes where i'm just like i think in some industries it would hurt you more to be like I'm fucking, you know, if you went up and being like, I just want to say that I'm a fucking feminist. Like you have, I, I've like, you know, we have friends that are just like uh, jokes all about like how liberal they are. And it almost has to be like, I know <laughs> because people are like annoyed by it yeah. or something. I mean, yeah, people are sick of it. But like, I've said that before and not even anything against like whatever, like a uh, uh, any type of person but you go if I was hiring people and I was just like for example a lot of times I would travel around and hire someone just like in a city and if I if I look at someone's thing and their their Facebook page is all about protesting and then they're like email cover as he him and all that sort of stuff like yeah I'm, I'm like this guy's gonna I be mean, first off if Zero. you have if you have like especially like not normal pronouns like there is a 50% chance that you're just like not a capitalist like you were like a communist or something and then you're like <laughs> why do I want to hire you you're gonna probably like force me to give my company away to the employees at some point <laughs> no, like quiet quitting stuff or yeah, whatever yeah like you're like all in that shit where you're like sabotaging the company from the inside because you're against capitalism you have a like, TikTok oh. page about quiet quitting <laughs> <laughs> So what is the like landscape for, do you have any like plans to kind of do television or like any of that stuff? Like, are you working on that stuff or are you 100% like fuck that shit? There's a couple of TV shows I'd like to do because I think they're fun and interesting and uh, uh, like we have a lot of panel shows and stuff in the UK. That's so weird. The the two weird like UK things is like you guys, all the panel shows and all the like, like presenters. Yeah. Like the fact that like- Presenters just, is like, weird. Presenters is just like a job. I'm just like a presenter. That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't think there's, is there anywhere else- And they're else like famous. That? Say that again. And they're like super famous just yeah. as a presenter. presenter. Just yeah. as a presenter. Like a TV presenter, yeah. yeah. Wait, is that Ryan Seacrest would that be that though, no? Yeah. And oh, so okay. would like Steve so Harvey as well. Oh, well, no, he's no, a comic. A comic. Yeah, but he's a comic who is a presenter. Is a presenter. Drew Carey, you're That's right. They're like, presenters now. A, lo a lot of presenters in the... What it happens is. a lot in the UK is people get into stand-up to get some sort of TV job like presenting or something like yeah. that. It yeah. seems like so funny I guess that your of... goal for stand-up is to be a presenter. <laughs> I guess the, the word presenter. <laughs> the word presenter yeah, I guess funny. it's a host or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the panel shows they don't they don't have here. That, that no, is... and they've tried to do a couple like that are Americanized for Netflix and they just haven't worked. Yeah, uh, um, the Canadian, what's her name? Uh, Catherine Ryan. Catherine Ryan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they tried to do it with their... They, they, there's a couple in the UK that are fun that I'd like to do. Um, Live at the Apollo, the stand-up show. Uh, it doesn't get as many views as it used to get, but I'd like to do that again. I've done it once before. I've, I'm on the list to maybe do it again this year and host an episode, which would be great. But oh, that's okay. more to do with, like, I want to say I've done it rather yeah, than, yeah. like, it's going to have a massive impact on a career. Um, I, I, I want to do bits, but I... So my yeah, manager left the industry in August, and then I had a few offers from other managers. But I just went on my own for a bit. And if you want to do TV, you need a manager knocking on the you door. You gotta be for in you. that you, whole you game. Do, yeah. It's a lot of work to It's a lot and also like I've gotta give them fifteen percent of everything in order to send what, six emails a year. Yeah. And I don't really feel like doing that at the minute because the podcast's doing well and I've just announced a, a ridiculous tour. Like I I just don't see the value in there's not enough T V work that could be worth fifteen percent of my live work. Sure. Like Yeah. Well, do, you, do you think the British office is better or the American office? Um, this is going to uh, be very unpopular. I've never watched either of them. Oh, it's a real hipster. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the opposite, where you're like too working class for that stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, I could never do that job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never watched either of them. I've watched a couple of episodes of, of the American one. Yeah, I get a lot of stuff. Do you know what I'm really bad for? Do you know 
if I miss the boat on watching a TV show mm -hmm. and then everyone's like, you've got to watch it. It makes me not want to watch it. So I've never seen Game of Thrones either. Me neither. Yeah, I just missed it. I'm just like, I missed it and I can't be asked. Like, there's no one for me to talk to about it now because everyone's seen it years ago. Yeah. Like, I've just, I'm done. So I'll just, I'm really bad for just re-watching the same old shit in the background. Just shit sitcoms. That Coronation just, Street. <laughs> love, love coronation it's like, a huge show in Canada like if I if I get in of a night after a show and I'm not tired and I just want to be on my phone and eat and shit I'll just put friends on yeah. and it'll just be on in the background friends man huh just, just in the background just numb white noise I've heard every episode a thousand times and it's just on and I, I it just it's, that's my piece you know what I was kind of thinking about like recently about friends was that like it's the same as almost not like enough some, diversity. <laughs> not enough diversity. I was getting mad about, <laughs> but like there almost is, uh, like a lot of those actors have gone on to do bigger things than Friends or whatever. Yeah. But like, still, I wonder if they like a lot of them look back and they were just like that moment. As much as we're more famous now, that was the most we ever changed culture. And I think a lot of comedians will have that where it'll be like, they're you know they go on to become big movie stars, but that moment, like I don't know, you might think of uh, I don't Jack of Jackass, like now? Johnny Knoxville is like a pretty big like movie star right now, but it's like never be as big of a deal as like that, like the amount that that like cultural moment. Or if you think about rappers, like like the, there's like a lot of like rappers that go on to become like big movie stars or whatever, yeah. but like. There's something about like just being like the catalyst for like a culture that's just like so much cooler or something. And I wonder if a lot of them still think of that. I understand your question, but I actually don't think anyone from Friends has been in anything bigger than Friends. No, no way. Jennifer they, Aniston, maybe is like Jennifer a huge Aniston, movie star. Jennifer Aniston would be the only one who is. That's who I'm talking. But about. I still don't think she is more famous. Oh today. yeah, David Schwimmer wasn't guy number three in the Army <laughs> show. <laughs> He's just, I don't think any of them are more famous. Jennifer Aniston, right? No, no. you think she's more famous than she's like the last than, when, than when she was Maybe Rachel. More money. Like yeah, pe yeah. people all over the world changed their fucking haircut yeah. to be like Rachel. Well, I think that you're kind of, in some ways, making the same point I'm making, but just like saying it differently because yeah. that's what I mean. Like it was yeah, so yeah. culturally like important. It was massive, and like I don't know how but she's often, a bigger movie star now or whatever. She's you big, call it. but I, 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 I mean, you, I think, you can't name the last movie she's been in. You know, she's not Friends. Well, movie stars are like a higher thing than tv things i guess or something i know i know what you're saying i just i i, I don't think that any of them have done anything bigger than friends yeah I like don't, I don't think so what what role has jennifer anderson done where you remember her for that more than friends? five adam sandler chick <laughs> was, uh, was she in the horrible bosses or something yeah but maybe like the, the last thing i saw her in. but that's the question isn't it was she in that thing or something she was in bruce almighty yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like what was her character's name in bruce almighty yeah yeah like it we, jennifer <laughs> <laughs> well i guess what i'm getting at is like i feel like there's something even like think of like tim and eric like i'm sure those guys are you know right now making tv shows and whatever yeah. doing whatever they're doing but like and that show wasn't that that huge but there's something like so cool about being like just th a moment in time yeah. where like you really did like define like a little era of culture whether it's like music or comedy i think to me that's like if you're getting into it you should almost like be trying to do that comedy central eight hours a day in the uk is still friends really like, they show like 16 episodes a day <laughs> I mean, it probably so, it's is, South Park here. Yeah, but it's probably like a similar thing to Canada, where they're like, it's just it's so much cheaper than producing a show, and yeah. it, the, uh, any show we make is not going to do well ratings wise. Yeah, so it's no, they haven't hit in a while. No, I'll go in a hotel room and I'll look at Comedy Central, and I'll be like, you're just like, is this like a, a glitch? It's just like 19 <laughs> South Park blocks in a row. Where it's just like, <laughs> yeah. it's so crazy. But okay, well, we're gonna wrap this up. In Lovely. one second, but do you know what star seeds are? No. <laughs> so we follow these Reddits. So star seeds are these. Do you know any girls are into like super whimsical shit? Have you ever dated one? Basically, which is crystals. Star seeds on the internet, and they think that they're actually from a different planet. <laughs> no, I haven't. I mean, I've had girlfriends who are like massively into astrology. Like what? This to the is point like, where the, like a, this is like taking that to the. Yeah, it's just to the point where you can't argue with them. Like where you're like you're Come being a, you're being in a fucking mood and they're like well actually uh, the Mercury is in for up. real and you're like oh for fuck's sake but if I'm a gobshite if I'm out of order then that's my fault <laughs> but whenever she's a cunt it's something to do with the sky I, I've been doing a joke about how like uh, Giselle said that there was protection crystals like that's why uh, Tom Brady won the Super Bowl but I was saying if you had told the girl like listen I don't have a condom but I have this protection crystal <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> like all of a sudden, all of a sudden now she doesn't believe in it. You know I mean? <laughs> That's really funny. But there's these funny like. They're, they're these basically the star seeds and they do these like they have this reddit where they just give each other like insane things and this person says so uh, uh, she's from a different planet and she goes but on my current form uh i i have someone that visits me in my dreams and holds my hands i feel her energy and i can talk to her telepathically not always clearly so generally i wouldn't die or something she would want to tie me up to a chair handcuff me and tie me with a piece of black metal to a chair and she would undress me and do various stuff and i realized that's called bondage to the point where this post i realized that the planet that i'm from has bondage so she's essentially <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine dating this girl where she goes i had a dream and the guy tied me up i know it's bondage now and i realize i'm from a planet that has bondage <laughs> by the way this is a funny one because there's always this is on reddit and there's always comments and this one is just like no comments this one is people are going like know, yeah, even okay. the star seed people are like <laughs> <laughs> it is always funny when their own people because they're all like, reaff very reaffirming they're all like yeah there totally is like here's my experience this one's just like <laughs> yeah i don't know about that whole thing <laughs> <laughs> Um, this person says minding my own business listening to Metallica when a very loud voice comes in and says I'm a Syrian starseed so essentially this person says every time they're listening to a Metallica um, a war against an eagle and a snake god just comes in and then the music tunes out so anytime that they're listening to metal music that's when their starseed voice comes in <laughs> and then there's one other person that says my mom says I'm an inferior human being because I'm not a star seed. So there's someone in the group that their mom's a star, <laughs> oh, star seed parent. Also, she said that the mom said that me and my sister are mud people or pig people. What is that? <laughs> mud people generally not a good thing to call someone. Star that is super funny. Star Whereas pig people is a pig compliment. <laughs> So racial connotations. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny to me, though. You're like that's you know when uh, you like they kind of make the joke about like the uh, like super hipstery parents that'll just be kind of like like my son's not even gay. That's like so bullshit. Just being like, let's this guy idiot's not even from a different planet. <laughs> it's such a funny thing. <laughs> uh, I, guess, sure. I guess it doesn't transfer over. Like if your mom's a star seed, I guess. I guess not. So, okay, so you're here for like, uh, what, like till maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm and going tonight on. you're going to see the musical? I'm going to go and see Parade, which uh, me mate told me to go and see. I like musicals. You're going by yourself? Yeah. I've never gone to see a musical since I lived here. Yeah, I sure haven't, done, either. I haven't yeah. done anything. No. I didn't like. I, I didn't stuff. grow up with this. It's just a few years ago I went to see Hamilton. And what I'm do like, your working class sick. blokes think that back home? I just don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "This is what you've been up to with your comedy friends." Huh? <laughs> <laughs> My dad would rather me go and see anything else. <laughs> <laughs> your dad, yeah, yeah. It's like the it's like the memes like goes to New York once. <laughs> it's like <laughs> sing, sing along to the Lion comes King. back with a tongue stud. Just can't wait to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Well, yeah, definitely. We'll, I think I'm gonna, we'll be at the stand, so maybe we can hang out after. But yeah, yeah and then on. Uh, also, uh, if you're listening to this, Adam's gonna be in our sketch that's coming out Monday, and then and then also they'll see the vice versa. This, but uh, and what? So the podcast, have a word podcast, and then on uh, all your socials is Adam it, Rowe Comedy. Uh, Adam Rowe Comedian on Instagram, Adam Rowe Comedy on Twitter, and two recent specials are called Juicy and Imperious. And they're both on YouTube. Yeah, and you put them out a month, like in between each other, which yeah, is yeah. like interesting. Well, Imperius, I finished in June last year, the tour, and it just took a while to get the edit sorted because there was a, a problem with some of the footage. And Juicy was just ready to be filmed. So I started writing that in September. It was done by January. I just recorded it and put it out. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, I'll check it out. It's super funny. So, okay. Adam wrote, this has been... Oh, oh you know what? Also, uh, catch me next weekend in Boston and then Atlanta, Vegas. New York tickets for the Gramercy are on sale and a few more dates that I'm forgetting. Patreon.com slash TheBlazeCast. Yay, yay. Okay, peace. Bye-bye. <laughs>